Hey, we none of us went out and drank over, did we? Huh? Oh. All right. So I hope we're getting a little more better, a little more better. And we're kind of wrapping it up, coming to an end. And we'll have a few messages on step 11 and then wrap it up on step 12. And then we'll be moving on to something else. So be praying for me and for the next direction of where we're going to go. Anyway, we've worked... Hopefully the first three steps, the first three steps are about peace with God. It's about finally coming to the end of ourselves and surrendering to a higher power, not being our own God. Identifying our higher power as Jesus Christ. Steps four through three are about peace with ourselves. Doing a daily moral inventory or self-examination about the things that are hindering our spiritual progress. Steps 8 through 10 were about peace with others, making amends for the harms and things we've done to other people. And now steps 11 and 12 are about maintaining our peace. Hopefully by now we've gotten peace on all sides. How many of you know that the Israelites had said that you know, they went through battle after battle after battle to drive out the inhabitants that possessed the land that one got it, that one that God had for them, divine destiny, and we know that finally they drove out all those inhabitants, and it says they had peace on all sides. Isn't that a isn't that nice to be in a I mean you know we can be in a world that's very unpeaceful, very chaotic, and very crazy, but we still can have God's peace. The word peace is the word irony. It means the peace that God has, not the peace of the world, but it's God's peace, the peace that He enjoys, that He says that my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, but I give you my peace. That is a different, that's the irony, that's His peace that we can enjoy. So even though we're in a crazy world, one of the beautiful gifts of the Holy Spirit is that we are the fruits of the Holy Spirit, that we can have God's peace to irritate, to, to, to peace, to protect us on all four sides. So Galatians 5 1, we talked about this last week. said it was for freedom that Christ set us free. The whole purpose of working these 12 steps is a process where we go from a total mess to God giving us a message. It's from going to being dysfunctional to being functional, from being unhealthy to being, to being healthy. Hopefully by now we're getting to the point where we've worked through those and now we've got peace. Now we want to maintain that peace. And so the whole purpose of this is that Christ set us free. Therefore, in light of that, it says keep standing firm or uh, do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. The Amplified says now this freedom that has made us free has made us complete and has liberated us. Now therefore, in light of that, stand fast <coughs> and keep standing. Do not be hampered and held and snared and submit and return again to a yoke of slavery <coughs> which you have once put off. How I many you know a dog can return to its mama? How I many you know the devils can be cast out of us and then they'll go out and come back and bring seven times worse? <coughs> <You know, coughs> we, <coughs> we know what it means to be a victim and now we're a victor. We know what it means to be conquered and we want to be a conqueror. We definitely know what it was like to be in a bondage and God has taken that yoke of slavery off and said, we've got freedom now, but how I many know we can go right back to that same bondage going around the mountain over and over and over again. And so the principle is that now that we have this peace, we, we want to maintain that peace. Every, every relationship has to be maintained. You know, we got these yards around here looking good. We've spent a lot of time taking weeds, fertilizing, watering, all that, and that's wonderful, looks good, but nobody realizes how much maintenance and how much work and money that goes into that. And Brooke will tell you, you quit turning these sprinklers on for about two weeks, and this beautiful thing here will turn, and it happened one time, trust me. I mean, within two weeks, this all this grass was destroyed with chinch bugs and weeds and I mean it was just 
flat eight up. So if we don't want that to happen, and if we want a nice yard, then we need to be we need to be doing a maintenance program. And so we do. We have a schedule. We have a regular maintenance program of when we want to fertilize, what kind of fertilizers, how much we want to water. Certain seasons we need to you know water more than others. But the point is, is that you know we've got a place to take in place a maintenance thing that that is a continual process. You know, you don't just say it's every week. Every week we pick weeds, every week we water. <coughs> Same way with the marriage. You can have a great marriage, but it takes a lot of work to get a good marriage. And then to keep a good marriage, it's even harder than that. <coughs> and so, you know, it's like a car, a fixer-upper. You know, you can go out and, you know, buy a, what do they call them? A, you know, what do they call them? A little fixer uppers a project a pet project or whatever and, and uh, you can buy an old junker car and you know you can spend a lot of quality time you know uh, fixing things up getting the rust out and getting it painted and get you know, I mean there's all kinds of things you can do to bring it up to a certain level and once you brought it up to that certain level you can't just drive away into the into the sunset and assume that it's always going to be that way brother Brother Matt's been working on a, a motorcycle for quite a while. We found it in a garage. It was cheap, and, but, and it was in pretty good shape, but it had been sitting there forever. Nobody maintained it. The gas got in the carburetor and the tank, and, and so he's been helping me restore that thing and bringing it up. It's took a lot of work to get it here, and he's going to turn it over to me. But once he turns it over to me, he's fixed it. But if I don't maintain it and I don't take it as my, my motorcycle and I don't do it, it's just a matter of time before that thing will sit up and go right back to where it was. So I don't know about you, but this, this is the whole purpose of our meeting. It's called living free. We, we, you know, we've gotten some freedom and now we want to learn how to live free, to continue to maintain our freedom. So we've got a dual relationship. We're always going to have to be working on ourselves. And we also going to have to be learning how to help other people. That's what step 12 is going to be about next week, about giving back and carrying that message and how. But these last two steps are probably the most two. We can work all these 10 steps, <coughs> do all this work, and quit working those, uh, and go right back to starting all over again. You know, guys that you know, what work these steps, they've been in here and went out, and we had a guy here leaving not too back, went out and relapsed, and... He's been in here at the beginning with these eight messages, and now he's right back to the pig pen. Went right back to the vomit. And now he's going to have to start over and, and work these things somewhere. So we're not only going to have to work these steps, but we're going to have to keep working them. It's a lot, recovery is a lifetime project. It's, it's a high maintenance <coughs> kind of life. How many of you feel like you're kind of high maintenance out there? Okay. Well, uh, so it's, uh, it's a process, and an ongoing forever recovery process where we have to always be working on ourselves and helping other people. We can't give what we don't have to other people. So this brings us to step number 11. <clears throat> this is really brought up in two parts. Step one of step 11 says that we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact or our connectedness with God as we understood Him. Then it goes on, and we're going to talk about this next week, about praying only for God's knowledge of His will, His perfect will, and the power to carry it out. How many know we need to know what God's perfect will is? Once we know what His will is, then it's on us now to follow through with that will. But we can know His will and not be able to carry out His will because we don't have the power. And how many know we really don't have the power? Most of us have proved that we're alcoholics and drug addicts and you know, sex addicts were all these things, and that, that's, that's who we, our power didn't deliver. When we finally surrendered to His power and it took over, then now He empowers us to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. And that's what we're going to talk about next week. So the first part says we, uh, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscience.